Hi, I'm Phil Parker. I'm the designer of the Lightning Process, and I've been asked to explain a few slides that we use in the Lightning Process all about how synapses work. Now, you may or may not be familiar with the idea of synapses, but they are a really fascinating thing. Um, they're basically the gap between one nerve and another, and this is really important because if we were just to have one nerve that ran through our body, there'd be a problem with this. In that every single sensation, every signal, would be experienced by us. It's a little bit like if you have a power station some distance from your house, you don't want all the electricity from that power station running through your lights all the time. Then your lights would be on all the time. You want to have the ability to switch it on and to switch it off. And this is exactly what synapses allow for. They allow us to switch on or switch off whether a signal is transmitted. In this case, instead of from a power station a long distance away, it will be coming from one nerve going into another. So maybe the nerve from your toe, which goes all the way up to your brain with these breaks is in it, breaks in it called the synapses. Uh, so that when you put your shoes on in the morning, you don't necessarily have to feel that sensation of your shoe for the rest of the day. So let's have a quick look at synapses and learn how they work and understand what happens if they slightly go wrong. So I designed this diagram a long time ago to try and describe how synapses work. And I was thinking about Disneyland, uh, you know, those amusement parks where they have crazy rides that kids and adults can go on. And in Disneyland, they have a special stick, a measuring stick that is a certain height for certain rides. So if you're a small kid uh, and you're too small, you're measured against this stick, you're not tall enough, and they say you can't go on the ride, it would be dangerous for you. So when you go to Disneyland, you see kids on their tiptoes trying to look as tall as they possibly can to get on the rides that they want to. So that's the purpose of, uh, of a stick in Disneyland. And this is called a selective gate. It means it allows certain people to go through the gate to the ride and other people aren't allowed on. And synapses work in exactly the same way. They have this ability to distinguish should this signal be passed on to the next set of nerves or not. So if a signal comes along and it's not big enough, then the synapse goes, no, you're going no further. And it doesn't trigger a signal in the second nerve, in this case, the pink nerve. The thing about synapses that's even more clever than that is they can change the height of the stick. They can change what we call the threshold, which allows them to be even more selective as to who goes onto the ride or who goes onto the next nerve, depending on all sorts of things. So they're not fixed. It's a bit like if you went into Disneyland in the evening when nobody was looking and you made the stick smaller. If you chopped a bit off the head of the stick, then the next day, loads more kids would be able to go on the ride than were ever allowed on before. The adults would still get on, the teenagers would get on, but the little ones would be able to get on as well. And this would be problematic because now they're getting on and it's not what's supposed to happen. In the same way, if we have a synapse where the threshold is lowered, so that means a smaller signal is allowed to jump over the gap and trigger a nerve signal in the, in the pink nerve, when it shouldn't, it can cause problems. And this is the basis of things like tinnitus and chronic pain and things like phobias, where a tiny signal that really shouldn't cause any problems suddenly causes an immense experience and immense response. The other problem you can get is exactly the opposite. Imagine if the stick in Disneyland was taller bigger and higher than it should be. That would mean not only the little kids couldn't get on the ride, but also people who should be and deserve to be on the ride because of the right height, the adults and the teenagers, they wouldn't be allowed on the ride either. So now the synaptic threshold has been raised so that nobody can go on the ride, or in the case of the nerve, no signals are sent across the gap. In this case, let's imagine there's a good signal that says, so calm down, everything's going to be fine. You can just relax. And that signal doesn't get through. Or it's a signal that switches off pain, switches off inflammation, because of course nerves do this. If those very powerful, important signals don't get across because the synaptic threshold has been set too high, then there'll be significant consequences for that. And this shows why synapses are so powerful. First of all, they exist. Uh, it was only discovered in 1954 they did exist. Secondly, they can decide and choose which signals get through. Thirdly, 
They can be altered to allow certain signals through in certain moments and other signals through different moments. So they have this flexibility of response. And of course, sometimes they can be set wrongly, either to let little signals through that shouldn't get through, or to block and oppose big signals that should get through. And the problem with synapses, or the great thing about synapses, is they are everywhere throughout your nervous system. And therefore, anything that affects your synapses has the ability to change so much of your body's physiology. Every synapse that is affected in an inappropriate way causes a bad response, an unhealthy response in the body where things aren't doing what they're supposed to do. And when that happens, that can show up in changes in your emotions, how you feel about yourself, how you think about yourself, and of course, in your physiology, because your physiological functions are measured, controlled, and moderated and managed by your nervous system, either directly or indirectly. So either you have directly nerves that go to control your muscles, control your blood vessels, all sorts of things like that. But also you have nerves that create the production of hormones and hormones run on the blood system and they affect your body. So thyroid hormone, uh, testosterone and so on. All these things are interactive with the nervous system. So anything you can do to get your synapses doing what they're supposed to do will be excellent for your health and your happiness. And the lightning process looks very specifically about what are we doing that will either assist to rebalance our synapse to get the thresholds right again? And what are we doing that's getting in the way? You may have also heard about neuroplasticity, which is another subject, but is very linked to this, which is the more you use a particular set of pathways, the more easier it is to trigger them because there's an effect on the synapse. In fact, what happens with neuroplasticity is one nerve grows closer to another. So the nerves that are most commonly triggered actually move together. So the gap is even smaller and therefore tinier signals are more able to get across. So I hope you found that useful and a little bit of uh, neuroscience, but I think really valuable neuroscience because once we understand why certain signals are creating bigger responses or none of the responses that we want, we can start to recognize what do we need to do to change this.